Okay, so now that you're getting pretty good at horizontal projectiles, it's time to look at the second type, which are called angled projectiles or projectiles fired at an angle. And there are two subcategories here. The first one, which is the one we're going to do today, is called ground to ground projectiles. You will be impressed to know that the second type is brilliantly named non ground to ground projectiles. Okay, so in a ground to ground projectile, this is like a football that's kicked, a golf ball that's hit, a soccer ball that's hit into the air, a puck. Okay, so anything that goes up at an angle and comes back down. Okay, to, uh, to the same height. So it might not necessarily be ground to ground. It could be one baseball player throwing it to another base baseball player and they're catching it at the same height. Or one basketball player throwing it to another basketball player and the ball being caught at the same height. So we say ground to ground, but really what we're implying is that the height is the same when it starts and when it ends. Okay, and so because it's at an angle, it means that this time VIY is not zero. There is a VIY and there is a VIX. Um, the v, in the X direction, AX is still zero. We're still going to assume that there's no air resistance. There's nothing that's going to speed it up in the X direction. From the instant it leaves your hand or your stick or your club or your whatever um, until it hits the ground again. But in the Y direction, um, it is going to change velocity because of gravity. So there is an AY and it's still going to be due to gravity, only this time we have to be careful about direction because in the beginning VIY is going up and gravity of course is acting down. So gravity is going to have to go in as a negative. Okay? Sorry, I was just lowering the volume there on something. Um, so gravity has to go in as a negative. Um, this will still be the range, the delta dx will still be this way. This time it doesn't make a lot, it goes all the way to the end, I just didn't have, didn't want to write over my vix there. This time it doesn't make any sense to ask you what's the delta dy, because the delta dy is going to be zero, it ends up back where it starts. And it doesn't make any sense to ask you the vf, because this is a parabola and it's symmetrical. So if it ends up back where it starts, then its velocity will be exactly what it was when it began, just in the opposite direction, and the angle will also be the same. But what is often asked is what is the maximum height that the projectile reached, delta dy max. And that delta dy max hap happens smack dab in the middle. It happens um, at the half time. We will call that time delta tu, the time it takes to go up. And we'll do that because when we get to non-ground-to-ground -ground projectiles, there'll still be a time that it'll take to go up, it just won't be the half time. So in this case, delta t total will simply be equal to 2 times delta tu. Okay? Um, that becomes important because at this spot right here, because as it goes up, the VIX doesn't change, but the VIY gets smaller and smaller and smaller because remember, AY is acting down. And so at this point, when it's at its highest height, the VY is zero. And that will, become in hand, will come in handy as we're trying to solve for our unknowns. So in the X direction, there'll be some VIX, and if you look at it, it's um, the cos it's the adjacent side, so it's going to be vi cos theta, and the y vi y will be vi sine theta. A y oh sorry here's an x a x is still zero. A y is 9.81 meters per second squared, and this time directions matter because this vi y is up, a y is down. Okay, we'd have a delta dx and then a delta dy. So let's do an example. Let's say we have a soccer ball. Um, 
A soccer ball that's kicked it with a velocity of 10 meters per second. Oh, I haven't used this angle in a while. At an angle of 36.87 degrees. And the question will ask three things. How long is it in the air? What maximum height did it reach, delta dy max? And how far away did it land, delta dx? Okay, so all we're given is just the, the angle and the vi. And you might think, man, I don't have enough info. So in the x direction, vix is vi cos theta, so we have this value, we can get it. ax is zero. And we want delta dx, and we need delta t. In the y direction, we have viy is vi cos theta, uh, sine theta going up, and we can get that because we have both vi and sine theta. We know ay is 9.81 meters per second squared, and that's it. Or it appears to be it, but it really isn't. It's where you need to remember the, at the highest point, v f y is zero and if we use that if we look at just the up then we can find our time up because a y is equal to v f y minus v i y over delta t and if we're looking up at up put a u there and cross this out and then you can solve for delta t u it'll just be negative v i sine theta over a y. So it will be negative 10 meters per second sine of 36.87 divided by negative 9.81 meters per second squared. So the negative on the top is from the subtracting in the equation and the negative on the bottom is because gravity is acting down. Okay, uh, sine at 36, that's 6, 6 divided by 9.81. Tu should be 0 0.6116 seconds. That's the time it takes to go up. The question wanted, part A, wanted the full time, so we have to double it. So it should be 1.223 seconds is my delta T. Okay, that's part A. Part B wants to know what maximum height did it reach. Not going to have enough room. I have to go to the back. So we're looking for delta dy max. And that'll be viy delta t plus one half ay delta t squared. Now, you just have to be careful. What time do we use? Well, the maximum height happens here at the half time. So we have to use the six. 116. Okay, so delta dy max will be equal to vi sine theta delta tu plus one half ay delta tu squared. So filling in our numbers 10 meters per second sine of 36.87. And that's going to get multiplied by 0.6116 seconds plus one half negative 9.81 meters per second squared times 0.6116 seconds squared. Okay, so delta dy max equals, when you do this, the first term is 3.6697 meters. And the second term is 1.83486 meters, and you're subtracting them. And when you do that, you get 1.83486 meters. The second term should always be half the first one. Okay, I'm running out of time. Delta dx is vix delta t. 1 half ax delta t squared. This goes to 0. What time do we use to find the range? It's going to be the full time. Okay, so 10 meters per second, cos of 36.87 times the 1.223 seconds. When you do this, you should get 9.7859 meters.